I'd like to welcome Philip Wade to the World How to Connection podcast. I'm your host, Mark Randall. Philip's been a, originally a civil engineer and has um, swapped ships. He's now um, experientially realised the nature of the true self, which he refers to as the intuitive science and shares this profound gift with the whole world uh, through de direct experience, spirit inquiry, intuitive touch, by his websites, Facebook, YouTube. Um, Philip, you're very busy on that uh, social network networking stuff. <laughs> he shares his experience has reached all continents and has held events in the UK, Iceland, Greece, and Amsterdam. Uh, Amsterdam's a lovely country. In his old life, he was a chartered engineer and director of a business. Um, However, this all was left to the ashes as he was focused on the deep inner calling uh, and the process he met his partner and wife, Sue, and she is his spiritual companion and their lives are totally transformed. Welcome, um, Philip. Thank you, Mark. That's a delight and thank you for sharing that. And also, uh, hello to all your listeners, wherever they are uh, in the world. Just one thing there, you, you used the word intuitive silence. I actually used the word infinite, infinite. silence. Okay. Yeah. And also infinite touch was the other part. But we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that, I'm sure. sure, anyway. sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's a delight to be here and great to be able to speak to you. Cool. Now, my background is more of a... Uh, psychotherapist um, I'm trained in transpersonal emotionalist counseling and you know, as part of that stuff which is a bit opposite to civil engineering how did you get connected to from civil engineering which I would imagine is very head analytical process into infinite silence yeah um, I suppose that's a quite common question I get asked but I think uh, probably the the, the key transition point I can remember was back in the year 2000. Um, I was in the midst of my career. And I remember um, being on a skiing holiday, it was, um, in Whistler on the west coast of Canada, and uh, which is thousands of miles from here, you know, like about 13 hour flight or something. And um, I, I was a good skier and I skied hard in those days. And I remember waking up one morning after a good day skiing and I'd been dreaming about work. And I remember saying under my breath, this has got to stop. <laughs> and the next thing I remember that uh, kind of triggered that, I was walking out of a bookshop when I got back home one day and I saw this book and it was actually by an Australian guy. Oh, what's his name? Anyhow, it'll come to me. It's got, it was called The Little Book of Calm. I don't know if you've seen it. It was very popular around the world. And I thought, that's what I need. I was quite calm on the outside, but on the inside, there was perhaps stuff going on. And I carried this book around in my briefcase for um, weeks. And then the next thing, I was off up to Edinburgh to see my partner. And I was in the airport bookshop, and there was another book, book by the same guy, Paul Wilson was his name, Paul Wilson, and it was called Calm for Life. And I thought, bingo. And I read that book cover to cover. And what the book, one of the main things the book taught me was meditation. And I absolutely committed to meditation. Uh, and I noticed cumulative benefits very quickly. And I really, really uh, went for it. You know, no matter what, and I was working ridiculous hours in those days. I got up uh, enough, early enough each morning to do half an hour each day. And even when I was traveling all over the country, I always made sure I meditated. And things kind of started to unfold from there. I started to find out about alternative therapies and things like that. And it became apparent really quickly that there was a new direction and a new calling. And I realized, I think that something that I'd been aware of before um, that by the time I was 50, I'd be doing something different. I'd always have this sense. Um, and it became a very strong calling very, very quickly. And the meditation just gathered 
more momentum, went deeper. Uh, I, I found I was actually really, very good at these alternative therapies. So I was kind of like living two lives. Uh, one as a chartered civil engineer running a, a big business and another uh, a sort of deeply exploring spiritually. And then it just became crystal clear that it, I was going to have to leave the old world behind. The calling was so strong. Uh, and I took a few years to make that decision, but I did that in 2009. Uh, and I, I knew that I did, if I didn't follow the calling, I'd regret it. And uh, it, was the, it was a great decision. <laughs> Can I ask about the calling? With the, with the calling, was it a deep inner wisdom calling, a calling from your heart? or a calling more from it, which was it from the intellect or more from the intuitive heart in a wisdom perspective? The intuitive inner heart wisdom, definitely. I'd, that a lot there had been a number of events that had led to it. Um, so a couple of years before I walked out of my old life at the height of my career, I'd suddenly been given in meditation, uh, a website domain name and it was gatewaylocation.org and I thought at the time well I was, I'm supposed to look at this website and I looked for it and there was no such website and I thought that's a bit odd because um, I'd kind of begun to realize by then to follow these insights and about mm, a few months later I got it again and I went again and it's still not there and then, I and then an option popped up to buy it and I thought, that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> In the process, as you're beginning to meditate, what was it like to begin to connect to yourself? You know, the silence in the body, the silence in the mind allows all the old material to surface from the rabbit holes. What was that like, that connection for you? Uh, I found it liberating um, in terms of a calmness that inside that I hadn't been there before. So even though I was in the midst of a, a very, um, what is a very stressful career in certainly in the UK, civil engineering, a very conflict based uh, industry in the UK. But it was very, very calming inside. But in parallel, I was exploring these alternative therapies and I realized that there was kind of like, in, as you've referred to, emotional baggage being carried around. <laughs> and I found through the use of these, I, I, fe I felt called to all these, so I explored two or three different things that actually, as I used these tools in conjunction with the meditation, that stuff just, just started to come up and fall away. And the kind of approach I took to it was like, wow, this is really good. You know, let's just get rid of this stuff. Uh, I wasn't afraid of it or anything like that. I just thought, let, you know, because every, every time something happened, I, you always felt better afterwards. So for me, it was just like, let's go through it. And if it came up, deal with it there and then. And so for me, it was just a very liberating process. Um, was it learning to connect to the emotions and just, notice them connect notice i think it was, yeah i learned very quickly because i think i was very discerning about who i went to to learn different things uh, very discerning and i learned very quickly that actually connecting to the emotions feeling the emotions but not becoming them was actually central and so and that fitted uh, quite a lot uh, the logic of that fitted with the heart logic of the knowing. And to an engineer, that seemed like the perfect solution. Um, it just made sense to me, uh, both intuitively and uh, from the kind of mental logic perspective. And so I, I, I kind of went into it with no fear, really. <laughs> well, obviously there was fear in the body, I should say, but I, I just went into it thinking like, this is what I've got, to, this is the direction I've got to go. In your early life, were you, would it be fair to describe, would you be a sensitive person that was, would notice his heart? Yeah, um, definitely. And, yeah, right. 
Yeah, definitely. But that became clear to me as the process started to unfold again. In fact, that had never really left me. It had been squashed somewhat in a, a very challenging industry. Um, but it, it, that kind of inner sensitivity uh, and intuitive knowing, I, I came to realize I'd always been there from a child. Um, I, I remember uh, incidents came back to me where there was just knowing about certain things that just puzzled me that why other people didn't get it or didn't seem to get it at least uh, when I was a child. And so that all came flooding back as this process opened up and it opened up really fast. Yeah. And as you have deepened into the process, then the calling came and you opened up and started um, sharing it with others. Can you describe how you share it with others physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Yeah, well, that, I mean, it's, it's changed a little bit over the years. Uh, it started off teaching some specific things, but now what's been made clear to me through, not from a mental, any mental decisions, but actually everything uh, in terms of how I share now, um, right down to the finest details, that's all come through intuitive and meditative insight, both through in terms of the ways that I share, and what I share and, and how I share. So now it's focused on a number of, should we say, pillars. It's meditation, uh, and it's a very specific meditation that again emerged in a very clear pattern as part of the realization. Um, it's called the infinite silence meditation, not surprisingly but it actually emerged in two stages in 2011 and 2014 and it was made clear as those things emerged absolutely crystal clear bombarded with insights that this you had to share this and you had to share it in this way and that i made <clears throat> available in an open source way right back from 2011 never held anything back it was always freely available so that was one part of it Another part that was also um, became immediately apparent is what would be traditionally called spiritual inquiry. In the East, they would call it satsang. But one of the things that's been made clear to me is that I'm not to use, or only to use sparingly some of that Eastern stuff because it appears at least as to how it's been shared. It's, it's to be relevant and pertinent to the modern day. So the inquiry I use is, is not something that follows any pattern of any tradition. Um, so inquiry, asking the question, who am I really? Who am I really? And then the third part <clears throat> was also shown in a vision. Sorry, the, the inquiry was shown in a vision. I was actually shown like a, a spherical bowl with questions being put into it. And I was to use this in the events. Uh, so I was shown that. And then the third part is what I call the infinite touch. Uh, and this again came in meditation, uh, physically being shown a vision of, if you can imagine I've got my left hand, I put a thumb on somebody's forehead there on what's called the third eye and then the fingers go on the crown and I call that the infinite touch and for those people who are struggling with emotions or perhaps find it difficult to connect in the meditation this physical element to it because the vibration in my body is now so high creates a very profound connection for them very quickly. Um, so that was something that was shown. And then, and then the fourth element, which is connected to the infinite touch, also shown in meditation, was what I called the open gaze experience. And I tend to link the infinite touch with the open gaze. And what that is, <clears throat> is in some groups, uh, when I've had them together for a while, we'll go up. Oh, the infinite touch will come up and what I'll do is I'll go around the group and sit in front of everybody 
And the first part is I'll actually ask them to look directly into my eyes. And I'm gazing not from my eyes, but from the awareness. And that, and then the infinite touch part comes and that uh, has quite powerful effects on people. It's true, you know, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And, yeah. and through our eyes, there's a lot of energy that travels through the eyes uh, and can yeah, create that resonance in connection to the other. Yeah, with, the, with the infinite touch, is that then enabling people to sense into their bodies if they're a bit disembodied up in their heads? Does that enable them to... Yeah, it, it connects them. Uh, yeah, I think it, what you just said there, but also uh, it brings them out of their heads more into the stillness, um, the silence of the heart space within. It kind of, if somebody's kind of very lost up here, it can move them quite quickly into a space of stillness. I remember recently, it was about just before lockdown here in the UK, somebody, just to give you an example of what, how that works. He'd been to a few of my events, uh, this guy, as a friend, and, but he was struggling with, his daughter had been diagnosed with some serious medical condition, which I forget what it was now. And he got himself really stressed by it. And I'd just done a talk and I could see, and I suddenly had this intuitive insight for him to, and he, and he hadn't been meditating and all the rest of it, that he needed to benefit from the touch. So I literally did that, and it just went, and he just felt a kind of deep de-stress um, happen to him, and he came into a stillness very, very quickly. Have you also experienced in the connection with the touch that sometimes it could also too then open the heart and allow the, the release of tears, the blocked Definitely. emotions? Definitely. Uh, yeah. Now, I've been itching to ask a question when you were just sharing you, the, the story just then. The infinite silence, how, <laughs> how can you describe that with um, words? Yeah, well, obviously, I'm sorry, sorry for that question. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I know you know that there's no yeah, way of yeah. doing that. But yeah, let me right. offer some paintings. So infinite silence is the term that emerged as part of the realization. It was a term it chose, again, not from here, but from silence within and it's it refers to it because it silence is a key word in there because everything ultimately goes back to silence you know so every sound every vibration always ultimately comes so it's a constant silence is a constant so this and the other word obviously infinite in, is that it's infinite there are no boundaries no limits and it's another term for awareness or infinite consciousness. And what I mean by awareness is, you know, we're aware beings, we are self-aware beings, but this awareness is before and beyond the human identity awareness. It's a seeing that is witness to every phenomena and i can do a little exercise to help people connect with this if you want um in a moment it's up to you as you're sharing it now are you connecting to the infinite science within yourself as you're sharing it with me now it's always there it's yeah. never not yeah, yeah, right. yeah how do you anchor to there what What's your process to remind yourself when you've gone back up into your head, into that civil engineer brain? How do you bring, <laughs> how do you bring yourself back to connect back to that infinite? Yeah, science? fortunately for me, it's most, you know, it's, it, it's never not there, but the, um, but obviously you still have this body and you still can. The, what I, the process I use it, it, is just, you see, everybody has this, and it's a matter of noticing it. 
if one catches the train of thought, so to speak, you know, we, ca we tend to catch the train of thought. Mm -hmm. There's always a gap that appears and it, that's the moment of choice. Yeah, right. that, that's the moment of choice. And you'll notice that if you pay, if you start to pay attention to that gap, then for me, the instant that gap's noticed, there's a seeing and a looking, and instantly the thought train stops. Now that's not probably going to be the case for most people because they're so attached to here. But the more that you meditate and the more that you um, use the uh, a spiritual practice, the more that you'll notice that gap and then you will come back to that space. And as you notice that gap, again, this is my bias, but are we dropping into the depth of the heart in the space of that gap? Without a doubt, I think it's, 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 it's an entry point. Yeah, it's an entry point. Like a portal? It, it's, yeah, like a portal. It's not in com completely it because yeah. there are layers, so to speak, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of that. The first point, though, when that gap's noticed, see, like every, everything is like a wave. So you see, uh, there's no, first some, the, like you're out in nature and all is still and calm and there's no thought. And then a thought comes and it's like a wave and it passes. An emotion comes and it passes. Now, what is it that sees that, that notices the passing of all phenomena? That's what I call the silent witness. Okay. Yep. Well, that's not quite it. It's because that, there's still a sort of kind of personal dimension to that. That silent witness itself dissolves into the infinite field of awareness but that witnessing is the entry point yeah and as part of the conversations that we travel into in this in podcast is the connection to the all that is whatever that is to you and we can be splitting hairs here but it's like yeah is that infinite silence the all that is for you and beyond yeah, well, that became unequivocally clear as the realization flowered in 2014. It's kind of, you know, somebody asks, well, how will I know? It's the kind of thing you can't miss. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an unmissable, unequivocal clarity, seeing that actually the term infinite silence it shows is that which we are always have been and always will be and it's it's eternal it's the eternal now that's often talked about in spirituality but it's also awareness that's simply aware of itself and the word infinite is a, an important word because that means everything is that but the problem we have in the human form is we forget that and identify as the body mind rather than the field of awareness or the field of infinite energy. And so it's not about believing me to say that's it. Actually, as it's realized, and that's the, why we use the term self realization, it becomes unequivocally clear to one and it doesn't require belief. <laughs> yeah they say that or i've heard that belief is something yeah, we have beliefs but in that infinite science or the all that is it's a faith and it's, a, it's a fact they call it it's like having the a, a faith just holding the faith it's just there i just wanted to ask a really basic question oh. when you're in that infinite space infinite silence what happens to your well-being and your mental health uh transforms it <laughs> uh, I, yeah, it's a, yeah. i've got an insight to share with you i think your, your listeners will <laughs> welcome but yeah. this actually came from a conversation with my wife and the insight came to her but it's really it's a it's a good response to that question you've just yeah. asked 
And it came to her after we'd explored this on the beach uh, one day as a meditative insight. Thought cannot heal your pain. Presence will transform it. And that presence is the infinite silence. Yeah. So the answer to your question is transformative. Yeah, I always say peace of heart, peace of mind. I go there. <laughs> yeah, they will say peace of mind, peace of heart. I go the other way, peace of heart, peace of mind, which is the transformative. Absolutely. It's, it's you won't such... get, yeah, you won't it, get to peace from the mind. Yeah, no, you won't. Um, yeah. And, you know, I jokingly say that, you know, my brain is 85% survival, negative, negative. And by learning to switch off that, you know, the intellectual brain and come down into the heart is the key yeah. to any yeah. transformation. Definitely. Unfortunately, there's bits in the heart that have memory from, you know, our, our wounds, but rather than get rid of them is how do we learn to have that infinite relationship to them? And what a beautiful yeah, I think um, what you're saying there is that, you know, people get confused about the heart, actually, because they use the term things like broken heart, uh, brave heart, and stuff like that. But actually, the pure heart can bear it all. The, what's actually, the reason that we have the experience of um, the heart being broken or in this pain is actually there's an overlay of what I would call the emotional body. Now that in itself isn't the heart, it's an overlay to the heart that uh, is like a, something that has to be passed through, the pain body that has to be passed through to get to the purity of the heart. When one is in the heart space, that pain body will automatically dissolve in the light of that awareness. Now, being two men having this conversation is, is I'm going to say it's a bit foreign, I'm joking, but um, how do, what do we need to do as men to facilitate more men getting out of their heads and connecting to the infinite science and the depths of their hearts? I think making it okay for men, you know, I think everybody, whether you're a man or a woman, goes through conditioning. And, you know, the conditioning for men in Australia is probably not that different to uh, the men in Europe or the UK. And, you know, the kind of this, this, this storyline that's sold to men that, you know, men are hard and they're, they're not emotional and all the rest of it, which is complete, uh, you know, because we're all emotional beings so part of it is making it okay for men to um, to connect to themselves to for men to meditate for men to actually have emotions and, and that to be okay um, because facing feeling and witnessing emotions is probably more challenging than trying to be the hard man it's actually quite easy to be um, the bully um, or whatever um, or the kind of not that you know built put up this face, but actually to go through this process can be more challenging. So the key for me is having role models, making it okay, uh, in, in inviting men to that. And what I find is that because people know I was a chartered civil engineer, know uh, and they see uh, the transition that's taken place, and so that immediately tends to create an invitation say i want some of what you've got yeah. and i thought well you can yeah. like that like with that. practice yeah yeah exactly practice right. practice practice yeah. I, when you first started the conversation i wanted to ask were you a bit like jack cornfields and uh richard davidson having to do your meditation closeted meditation back in those days before it became in the mainstream as it is now it's, yeah, definitely. For a, a person, yeah, for a I'm while. sure you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been telling too many civil engineers that they'd be saying, what are you smoking there, Philip? <laughs> <laughs> I experienced a bit of that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, in, in terms of what piece of advice would you give a younger Philip commencing his journey of life right at this point? 
What would I that piece of advice gonna, be? I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> um, and I was trying to uh, reflect on what it might be. And what came to me was, it's all going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. To, to surrender, come into yeah. heart, mm. and, yeah. Yeah, and trust that it's there. Yeah, and, and actually you're okay as well. Not only is it all going to be okay, it is all okay. All okay, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we are all okay. Yeah, absolutely. Deep, deep down in that, in that essence of what you were talking about before. Mm, absolutely. It's just, it's just pure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pure, unkid, yeah. It's just, now, how would the world be, a, how would the world be a better place if we could all start to resonate from that space interconnectedly together? Uh, it would transform the world as we know it. You know, for me, I put it this way, <clears throat> when inner peace is realized, outer peace becomes possible at last. Oh, right. and so, and it's not the other way around. You know, yeah. so many people are looking for peace in situations, events, relationships, and so forth. And it's ne that's never going to be a lasting peace. So by <clears throat> allowing that transformation to emerge from within, we'll not only realize who we are, we will realize that we are the source of peace, which is not this non-personal awareness. And that will automatically make us see that, you know, okay, so there's Mark here, he's in Australia and Philip here in um england but actually we're infinitely and intrinsically connected and so we won't see that sense of separation you know oh well he's an aussie and i'm a pommy and all that okay well that might be a bit of fun but it's it's actually not truth and so the the transformation that takes place inside will bring about uh, an outer transformation that is will be incredible in comparison to what we see uh, in the world at the moment and as i was sitting here with you yeah you're in london in england i'm in australia yeah. but my sense is my i i reson i felt it resonate when you talk about that infinite science and just yeah as we're breathing and just in the silence it's the silence is there just as we are speaking now it is and it's, yeah, and it's, yeah. and it's like Sometimes I say to it, it's like consciousness speaking to consciousness about yeah. consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do a brief, um, you know, in, to drop people in there to draw the conversation to a close? Would you like to finish with a brief meditation into dropping people there? Or where do you? Where yeah, we can do. I don't know how long you've got, but I can do. Um, actually, I can do. Let me do a little exercise first because sure. uh, this, this will help people get, and then I'll. Yep. take it from there because this is quite a useful tool that people can use in their daily life so right. there's two parts there's two parts to this so if you want to close your eyes just now for a moment mark yep. uh, I'm, I'm going to need you to speak in a moment but uh, if you still do you need your mic but oh. so just close your eyes for a moment and just ask inside who um, I, who, um, I, and just with that for a second or two, and then just open your eyes for a moment and just let me know if anything came there. It, there was something that came into the heart, but I was not able to put words to it. There was an yeah. energy in the heart and I just could not, who am I, who am I? The obvious answer, you know, the intellectual answer was Mark, but deep down it wasn't, it was something else. Good, okay, okay. So, yeah. so just being with that. Now, when I ask that question, people get that kind of response. This kind of intellectual wants to go to the identity as Mark. Sure, yeah. But if there's an opening, there's a kind of deeper seeing so then we can te uh, take the question a little bit further. So let's do that again. So close cool. your eyes. And now we're going to reframe the question. Who am I 
without memory. Who am I without memory? You just be with that for a short while. And open your eyes again, yeah. Essence. There you go. Now, what this, and, and we can do a little, take that a little further with the meditation in a moment, but what that does, that second part of that question takes us away from mind identification, strips away the, the, the going to mind and comes back to so and usually when I ask that question most people get in an immediate deeper connection yeah yeah right. so if you want to do the little we'll do a five, five yeah. minutes shall we yeah do about five minutes that'd be great thank you yeah. good so I just just on that exercise people can use that anytime any place anywhere and that will bring a stillness very quickly <laughs> So let's just go to a meditation. Sure. So it's called the Infinite Silence Meditation. And when I say the term spheres of light, balls of light or spheres of light, just be open to that. Don't need to do anything. So just closing your eyes. And first bring your attention to your body. Noticing the phenomena, the breath, sensations, emotions, just silently and without any judgment just accepting what's here. Just like you're watching a movie from the inside. And as you merge with this witnessing presence, just be open from your heart to the experience of spheres of light. Spheres of light. This energy of spheres of light is the same as the pure universal state. I am the infinite I am or pure being. It's an aliveness and this too can be seen or sensed, just resting attention on this I am. And this can only be seen or witnessed from the silent witness in infinite silence. Just merging with this silent witnessing like watching a movie from the inside. And this 
silent witness is like some ice in an ocean of water and it's melting dissolving becoming one with the water and the water is like an ocean of silence stillness presence just like you dived into the ocean and all has become still and silent deeper and deeper simply silently witnessing merging melting And just for now, in silence, we trust. And this trust becomes the knowing, the realizing of infinite awareness in silence you will <clears throat> realize your truth in truth you will realize you are silence infinite silence infinite awareness that's always present here now never not here knowing now even as we close this short meditation one can remain in and as this silent awareness or infinite silence aware of your body again the chair you're sat on aware of the space and whenever the moment is right for you I'll ring the singing bell gently opening your eyes Namaste Namaste Philip Wayne, thank you very much for that beautiful meditation, this beautiful conversation. It's amazing how we connected uh, in your conversation with Guy. Um, yeah, just soon as the, there was a connection between the three of us, it was just, and, and I was loving it. Yeah, I felt that too. It was, and uh, it's really lovely that, you know, more of us men are coming out to play. Yeah. yeah, to be able to share this material, um, because the more we do it, connect our hearts, 
and in that infinite silence, Mother Earth is going to be healed. As well as, as, yeah, yeah, and that's well. the problem. Yeah, we start coming back into harmony with the with the exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity to have a conversation with you. Lovely to see you in person. Uh, so, and that's the wonderful thing with technology. Let's stay in contact. Um, sure. No, look, yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. And yeah, uh, yeah no, if you, you want to talk further sometime, just let yeah, me know. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd really love to go deeper a little bit, you know, go, yeah, just to have that exploratory depth into the depth and yeah, just bounce out ideas and just, just have the conversation without any agenda. Yeah, uh, because it's really lovely to have that, to share this stuff. Maybe you, me, and Guy could do something together. Yeah, sometime. yeah, yeah, that'd be a great idea. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your uh, Sunday morning. You're heading into okay. uh, the Sunday <laughs> Sunday lunchtime. Well done. <laughs> We're not far off bed for Monday. Namaste. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it must be nearly Monday with you. So <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right, Philip. Thank you so much. Lovely to talk to you. Namaste. Yeah, yeah, thank Cheers. you so much. Yeah, Blessings bye -bye. to you. Thank you. Thank you.